Welcome back to our PCB Layout Driven Design with VSS series here on AWR-TV. Uh, in the previous uh, step, we looked at component modeling. Now we're going to move on to the actual ideal PCB design. Uh, in this step, we're actually going to accomplish two steps. Um, the first step is sort of a leftover piece from step one when we were talking about the uh, component modeling. We touched very briefly on including the pad stacks for the PA. In other words, a small piece of layout that really is very much related to the component modeling because it's essential for that bit of uh, layout to get done to allow us to put the component on the board. So we'll just take a, a brief look at that um, in a little bit more detail than we did in the last video. And then we'll move on to looking at assembling the ideal PCB. We're going to use the components only, except for where we have the pad stacks incorporated into our component model. We won't look at any interconnects. What we'll do is we'll do some simulation in Microwave Office to assure ourselves that the models are accurate and they're, they're giving us a reasonable answer for things like gain and um, P in versus P out. Um, and then we'll go ahead and, and take that um, that ideal board and put it into VSS and look at EVM, but we're going to do that in a very special way. So here's our ideal board design in um, Microwave Office. As you can see, there's um, there's a, uh, a transmit receive chip over here, but really the, um, the the details of our design are over here that we want to focus on, where we have some balance and our power amplifier chip, um, a TR switch and a diversity switch as well. If we go into our PA package design, here's the uh, behavioral model that we looked at previously for the package, uh, I'm sorry, for the power amplifier where we have a nonlinear element to give us the P and P out characteristics. We have a low pass filter to give us the um, frequency characteristics and we've used an HB tuner to give us the output impedance characteristics. Uh, I've also included um, two M3 CLIN models and the M3 CLIN model is something that we want to use for three coupled lines put together. Now the sizes and dimensions I've chosen for my three coupled lines here, you can see it's rather small, 0.4 millimeter um, spacing, 0.4 millimeter width, and 0.4 millimeter length. I've chosen that because that's going to be the size of my pad stacks. And where I have coupled lines in my pads that I'm very concerned about, like on the input of the chip here and on the output of the chip here, uh, with these pads going to ground, I want to be able to incorporate that into my design in a very um, immediate way. I want to incorporate it very early in my design process because I know it's going to be a factor in my design. Well, now I could take all of these chips, my um, my uh, splitter, which represents um, the uh, signal coming out of my transceiver, my ballon coming out of my transceiver into my power amplifier, the TR switch, and an antenna ballon, and I can cascade these together in VSS. Now, each one of these models individually comes from Microwave Office, with the exception of the splitter, and I'm just using that to split my signal here in VSS. But as a LIN-S block, I'm modeling my balance. So this is taking the S parameters from Microwave Office and representing them as a linear simulation-based block. My PA uh, design is being modeled in Microwave Office with that um, the uh, microstrip coupled lines as well as the uh, nonlinear elements that uh, and the detailed elements that we showed in the uh, PA package model, but it's being brought into VSS as a nonlinear simulation based uh, block. And similarly, the um, TR switch and our antenna ballon are LIN-S blocks as well. And so what this is doing is it's reusing the models and the simulation in Microwave Office and on the fly or immediately as we need it in VSS, it generates the appropriate model in VSS for us to use. Um, when we model our entire board, again, that's this schematic here. We model that in Microwave Office. Our P in, P out curves for our PA looks uh, something like this. And our ideal board is somewhat less than that. We've lost some uh, power out um, versus power in. And that's mainly because of the mismatch in these circuits as we're cascading them, as well as the insertion loss um, for the various components. Um, if we look at the gain, we see a similar thing where we've lost an incredible amount of gain because of the insertion loss, which is on the order of uh, 4 or 5 dB, but the rest of this loss that we're experiencing is due to mismatch. Now we can take our WiMAX system for the transmit side and instead of our amplifier under test, we insert that entire board sub-circuit that we developed in VSS. Again, 
that's um, that's this circuit over here, I, reusing the models from Microwave Office. We embed that as a sub-circuit in VSS, and when we do the simulation, the EVM simulation that we've been looking at, you can see that we've degraded quite a bit from where the, P, uh, the PA alone was. The PA alone was giving us roughly 24 to 25 dBm P out at 2.5% uh, EVM, and you can see that uh, we don't even get to... Um, 24, 25 dBm out um, at 8% EVM. So we've degraded the system quite a bit. A portion of this is due to the mismatch, but uh, I'm sorry, uh, the vast majority of this is due to the mismatch. And so what we're going to look at as we go forward in the rest of our design is how can we better use the interconnects? How can we include the interconnects into our design so that we can uh, maximize our EVM? In other words, reduce it down quite a bit to 2.5% um, at 24, 25 dBm. Can we do that given our interconnects? Uh, making up for the mismatch that our ideal components are experiencing um, from package to package. Well, that's it for this installment of uh, VSS for PCB design. Uh, if you have more questions about VSS, there's plenty of information on the website. There's examples that come with um, the uh, free download of the product, the free demonstration download. Um, there's white papers. There's additional AWR TV videos for both VSS and PCB design. And if you have any other questions, please contact your AWR sales professional.